Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Manjula Sharma from University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Low Power Factor Watt Meters from the paper Measurements and Instrumentation. From this module, students may get to know about the following topics. First of all, the low power factor type watt meters. We will see that special features need to be incorporated in an electrodynamometer watt meter to make it a low power factor type of watt meter. Like pressure coil current, compensation of pressure coil current, compensation for inductance of pressure coil current, and small control torque. Next, we will study about the power in polyphase systems. We will read about the Blondel's theorem. After that, we will consider the measurement of power in three phase circuits. We will study about the three watt meter method, two watt meter method, in which we will discuss the special topics of the star connection and the delta connection. We will also study about the one watt meter method. After that, we will move on to three phase watt meters. Towards the end, we will study about the measurement of reactive power, which will include single phase wall meters, polyphase wall meters, and reactive power measurement in three phase circuits. So, students, the measurement of power in circuits having low power factor by ordinary electrodynamometer watt meters is difficult and inaccurate due to the following reasons. The deflecting torque on the moving system is a small point to low power factor even when the current and pressure coils are fully excited. Second reason may be the errors introduced because of inductance of pressure coil tend to be large at low power factors. Thus, special features are incorporated in an electrodynamometer watt meter to make it a low power factor type of watt meter. These features are discussed in detail. First is the pressure coil current. The pressure coil circuit is designed to have a low value of resistance so that the current flowing through it is increased to give an increased operating torque. The pressure coil current in a low power factor watt meter may be as much as 10 times that employed for high power factor watt meters. Second is the compensation for pressure coil current. The power being measured in a low power factor circuit is small and current is high on account of low power factor. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary to compensate for the pressure coil current in a low power factor watt meter. Third is the compensation for inductance of pressure coil. The error caused by pressure coil inductance is Vi sin phi tan beta. Now, with low power factor, the value of phi is large and therefore the error is correspondingly large. Hence, in a low power factor watt meter, we must compensate for the error caused by inductance of the pressure coil. This is done by connecting a capacitor across a part of series resistance in the pressure coil circuit. Fourth is the small 
control torque. Low power factor wattmeters are designed to have a small control torque so that they may provide full scale deflection for power factors as low as 0 0.1. Students, let us study the power in polyphase systems. First of all, we need to understand the Blondel's theorem. Consider a network which is supplied with N conductors. The total power is measured by summing the reading of N wattmeters. So arranged that a current element of a wattmeter is in each line and the corresponding voltage element is connected between that line and a common point. If the common point is located on one of the lines, then the power may be measured by n minus 1 wattmeters. Now, let us understand the measurement of power in three phase circuits. First, the three wattmeter method. The connections as employed for a three phase four wire system are shown in the figure. The common point C of pressure coils and neutral O of the circuit coincide and therefore V is equal to zero and V1 is equal to V1 prime, V2 is equal to V2 prime, V3 is equal to V3 prime. Sum of instantaneous reading of the wattmeters is given by P1 plus P2 plus P3, which can be written as V1 I1 plus V2 I2 plus V3 I3. Hence, these three wattmeters measure the power of the load. Second is the 2 wattmeter method. In a 3 phase 3 wire system, we require 3 elements. But if we make the common points of the pressure coils coincide with one of the lines, then we will require only n minus 1 equal to 2 elements. Instantaneous power consumed by load is given by V1 I1 plus V2 I2 plus V3 I3. Let us consider two wattmeters connected to measure power in three phase circuits. As shown in star connection and delta connection. Star connection or the V connection. Instantaneous reading of P1 wattmeter is given by P1 is equal to I1 multiplied by V1 minus V3. Instantaneous reading of P2 wattmeter is given by P2 is equal to I2 multiplied by V2 minus V3. The sum of instantaneous readings of two wattmeters is given as P1 plus P2, which gives us V1 I1 plus V2 I2 minus V3 into I1 plus I2. From Kirchhoff's law, I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. Therefore, sum of instantaneous readings of two wattmeters is given by V1 I1 plus V2 I2 plus V3 I3. Thus, the sum of the two wattmeter reading is equal to the power consumed by the load. 
This is irrespective of whether the load is balanced or unbalanced. Now, let us see the delta connection. The instantaneous reading of P1 wattmeter is given by P1 is equal to V3 multiplied by I1 minus I3. The instantaneous reading of P2 wattmeter is given by P2 is equal to V2 multiplied by I2 plus I1. Sum of the instantaneous readings of 2 wattmeters is given by P1 plus P2, which can be written as V3 I3 plus V2 I2 minus I1 multiplied by V3 plus V2. From the Kirchhoff's law, V1 plus V2 plus V3 is equal to 0. Therefore, sum of instantaneous readings of 2 wattmeters is equal to V1 I1 plus V2 I2 plus V3 I3. Thus, the sum of the 2 wattmeter readings is equal to the power consumed by the load. This is irrespective of whether the load is balanced or unbalanced. Now, let us see the 1 wattmeter method. This method can be used only when the load is balanced. The connections are shown in the figure. The current coil is connected in one of the lines and one end of the pressure coil to the same line. Other end being connected alternately to the other two lines. We have V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3 is equal to V and I1, I2, I3 are all equal and let us represent them by I. Also, V13 is equal to V12 which is equal to square root of 3 into V. Reading of watt meter when switch is at 3 is given by P1 is equal to V13 I1 cos 30 minus 5 which can be written as square root of 3 vi cos 30 minus 5. Reading of the wattmeter when the switch is at 2 is given by P2 is equal to V12 I1 cos 30 plus 5 which is written as square root of 3 vi cos 30 plus 5. Thus, P1 plus P2 is equal to square root of 3 Pi full multiplied by cos of 30 minus 5 plus cos of 30 plus 5 which is equal to 3 Vi cos 5. Thus, 10 phi can be written as square root of 3 multiplied by P1 minus P2 divided by P1 plus P2. So students, now let us see the three phase wattmeters. In dynamometer type, three phase wattmeter consists of two separate wattmeter movements mounted together in one case with the two moving coils mounted on the same spindle. There are two current coils and two pressure coils. A current coil together with its pressure coil is known as an element. Therefore, a three-phase wattmeter has two elements. The connections of two elements of a three-phase wattmeter are the same 
as that for 2 watt meter method using two single phase watt meters. The torque on each element is proportional to the power being measured by it. The total torque deflecting the moving system is the sum of the deflecting torque of the two elements. So, the deflecting torque of element 1 is proportional to P1, while the deflecting torque of element 2 is proportional to P2. Therefore, total torque is proportional to P1 plus P2. And let us denote it by capital P. Hence, the total deflecting torque on the moving system is proportional to the total power. In order that a three phase wattmeter may read correctly, there should not be any mutual interference between the two elements. A laminated iron shield may be placed between the two elements to eliminate the mutual effects. Now students, let us see the measurement of reactive power. The reactive power in a circuit is given by Q is equal to Vi sin phi. It is often convenient and even essential that the reactive power be measured. For example, in load monitoring, such a measurement gives the operator or load dispatcher information concerning the nature of the load. Also, the reactive power serves as a check on power factor measurements. Since ratio of reactive and active power is 10 phi equal to Q by P. Also, the apparent power Vi which determines the line and generator capacity may be determined from measurements of active and reactive power. Vi is equal to square root of P square plus Q square. So students, now let us study the single phase warmeters. In a single phase circuit, reactive power can be measured by a warmeter, which is nothing but volt ampere reactive meter. This is an electrodynamic wattmeter in whose pressure coil circuit a large inductive reactance is substituted for the series resistance so that a pressure coil circuit current is in quadrature with the voltage. Under these conditions, the wattmeter reads Vi cos 90 minus phi, which is equal to Vi sin phi, and it is the reactive power. It should be noted that warmeters do not read correctly if harmonics are present or if the frequency is different from that used when calibrating the instrument. Second is the polyphase warmeters. In three phase circuits, phase shifting which is necessary for the measurement of reactive power is usually obtained by phase shifting transformers. This phase shifting may be done with two auto transformers connected in an open delta configuration. The current coils of the wattmeters are connected in series with the lines as usual. 
phase line 2 is connected to the common terminals of the two auto transformers and phase 1 and 3 lines are connected to 100% taps on the transformer. Now students, let us study the reactive power measurement in three phase circuits. In the case of balanced three phase circuits, it is simple to use a single wattmeter to read the reactive power. The current coil of the wattmeter is connected in one line and the pressure coil is connected across the other two lines as shown in the figure. Referring to the figure, current through the coil is equal to I2. Voltage across the resistive coil is equal to V13. Therefore, reading of the wattmeter is equal to V13 multiplied by I2 cos 90 plus 5 which is equal to minus of square root of 3 Vi sin 5. Total reactive volt amp amperes of the circuit is given by Q is equal to 3 Vi sin 5 where phase angle phi is equal to tan inverse Q by P. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module that is the low power factor wattmeters. We have seen that the measurement of power in circuits having low power factor by ordinary electrodynamometer wattmeters is difficult and inaccurate. Special features are thus incorporated in an electrodynamometer wattmeter to make it a low power factor type of wattmeter such as pressure coil current, compensation of for pressure coil current, compensation for inductance of pressure coil and small torque control. Then we have also studied about the power in polyphase systems. We have studied the Blondel's theorem. We have discussed the measurement of power in three phase circuits. We have discussed in detail the three different wattmeter methods that is three wattmeter method, two wattmeter method in which we have seen the special cases of the star connection and delta connection. We have discussed the one wattmeter method in detail. We have also seen the three phase wattmeters. Towards the end, we have studied the measurement of reactive power by single phase wattmeters, polyphase wattmeters, and reactive power measurement in three phase circuits. Thank you.